As the 2020 presidential campaigns kick into gear, candidates are counting on celebrity star power to help lead fans to the ballot box. It started as risky business, celebrities endorsing politicians. But Frank Sinatra's star power was strong enough to help propel JFK to the White House. Leading the way for other big names to push their political preferences. It's time for a woman to be in there. <laughs> Yeah. I'm with her. He should be president of the United States. That's what he should be. He should be president of the United States. The next president of the United States is Hillary Clinton. The man who I know knows who we are and knows even better who we can be as a country. The Oprah effect helped bring in more than a million votes for Barack Obama in 2008. It's your moment. It's your time to seize the opportunity to support a man who, as the Bible says, loves mercy and does justly. Last year, it was Taylor Swift who perhaps made the biggest push in politics when she broke her silence. Are you ready for it? In just two days, Taylor's post saw more than 200,000 new voters registered around the country, but not everyone was happy. Let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less now. And now Chrissy Teigen is the latest to join a string of stars sharing views with their millions of followers. So how much are celebrity endorsements really worth? Joining us now is the author of USA. G'day, Alex Vikovic. G'day, Alex. How are you, mate? <laughs> well, thanks. Look, Alex, these political endorsements, I mean, it's not new. We said they go all the way back. So, I mean, but there's definitely, I guess they're becoming more and more popular or we're hearing about them more and more maybe due to social media. Um, do you think then that celebrities are, more celebrities have publicly thrown their support behind candidates? Yeah, look, it is becoming more of a thing. And partly, you're right, that is social media. But I think it's also because we've got a celebrity in the White House. That's right. Um, and we do forget that because the way that we think about Trump now as a, you know, hugely divisive um, political figure, the most powerful man in the world, is very, very different to the way that Americans came to know him, um, which was as a successful businessman. But really, it was as a celebrity. I mean, it was a cameo on Home Alone 2 um, and then, of course, hosting The Apprentice, which... Good, good, good callback to Home Alone 2. Oh, well wonderful done. show. Yeah, not only at Christmas time. Um, but, you know, The Apprentice really was a huge show. You know, it's the equivalent of The Block or MasterChef where most households have some so familiarity So it's like Scotty Cam being the Prime Minister. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Although, you know, it'd be interesting to see if he had as much Twitter game um, as Donald Trump. Um, but, you know, most Americans knew who he was. Um, and, of course, whatever you think of his politics, he does have that star power. Um, he does have that big personality. Um, and Barack and because Obama... of his experience in that, he knows how to work the media. Absolutely. And, and, and that's the problem for the other side is that a lot of politicians simply don't have that. Their politics um, background, you know, they're, they're policy experts, they're lawyers, they're professors, and they just don't have that star power. So for the campaigns, trying to recruit people that do have that um, is really, really effective. For the celebrities themselves, it's a little bit tougher to work out why they're weighing in. Um, you know, partly I think it's because, you know, you do need to keep your engagement if you've got a big Twitter following or a big social media following. But more so, I think, for the guys at the top, you know, they're not doing it to curry favour. You know, they're just mm. as powerful as the president in some ways. So I think for a lot of them, they really are genuinely motivated. Um, you know, it's a really divisive time in American politics. Um, so for a lot of them, I think they're leaning in um, because they really do want to sort of see a change. Mm. Um, and if you've got millions of Twitter followers, then you need to use them. There is a limit to how much a celebrity endorsement can do, though, because if you look at the last election, Hillary Clinton had by far more star power behind her. Mm. Donald Trump was almost scraping the bottle of the barrel when it came to celebrities, and we all know how I mean, that Kid one Rock turned is not out. At the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, he had the Duck Dynasty guys, which yeah. was a big That's deal true. for him <laughs> at, at the time. Look, it is very hard to work out ever the reasons why an individual votes the way they do, um, and there's a lot of research that's been done that even recently. Um, you know, friends and family are still more influential than celebrities. Um, but there's a few things they can do, um, and that's why it's going to be a bigger deal in 2020, because you've got 24 Democrats who are running to take on Trump. So it's a very heated field. So at this stage in the game, a year and a half out, they're trying to do anything they can to insert themselves into the news cycle, and a celebrity endorsement is a way of doing that. Do you think, though, there's a... You know, often there's a pushback when a celebrity endorses something, like, oh, get back in your box... You don't have a right to say stuff like that. Um, and I feel like that's... Uh, do you agree with that sentiment? Do you think the celebrities should stay out of it? 
Look, I think um, the ones who are at the top have a lot to lose. And if you look at, like, an example at Taylor Swift, who stayed out of it for a long time um, and then ultimately did endorse a candidate in the 2018 midterms, a Democrat candidate, you know, she had a lot to lose because these are mainstream stars that have support mm. in red states, in blue states. They've got Republican fans, Democrat fans. So there is a lot for them to lose. Um, but I, I do think that the public is expecting celebrities to step in more. Um, and that's because people have lost faith in politicians and in institutions, in, in the media to some extent, in, in experts. Um, and so I think they are looking for leadership elsewhere. And celebrities, sports people, entertainers, um, they do fill that void. So I think when you see Leo DiCaprio doing climate change stuff and you see um, other celebrities taking on Trump, I don't think people roll their eyes at it the way they may have in past decades. Right. And that's why they're cutting through. We don't really see it here, though. It seems to be an American phenomenon. I'm, I'm struggling, actually, at the moment to recall... Australian <laughs> celebrities who will say vote for Bill Shorten or vote for Scott Morrison. Yeah, that's right. And partly I think that's because, you know, it's a difference in culture. I don't know if Australians care as much what celebrities think. So there's less of a celebrity culture in, in general. Um, but more so it's because of the differences in the political systems. Mm. So you've got to remember, and when people look at American politics and they say, why is it such a circus? Why is it so crazy? The main reason is because they've got voluntary voting. In Australia, yes. all you've got to do is be slightly better than the other person in the seats that matter. Or because, not as bad. Well, that's right, <laughs> because everyone's already turning up. Whereas in America, all the campaigns talk about is GOTV, get out the vote. Um, and celebrities are a big way of doing that. And particularly for the Democrats, they're arguably at a bit of a disadvantage because they're more reliant on millennials who we know don't vote in big numbers. But you've got this uh, problem, which is where Hillary sort of won the popular election but, mm. uh, but lost the election. You know, so she won the popular vote, I should say, but lost the election due to the ele what's called the Electoral College over there. So when you have all these celebrities come out and endorse Hillary, I'm sure whoever the candidate's going to be for the Democrats you know, next year, maybe it's Bernie, maybe it's Elizabeth Warren, uh, let's say... Uh, Let's say all of California <laughs> gets behind these mm. candidates. Every celebrity in Christendom gets behind them. Can they defeat Trump? Look, it's not going to be enough because, as you say, Hillary Clinton had them. But what's crucial is when they come into the race. And Hillary Clinton didn't have those endorsements until right at the end. There are a lot of celebrities lining up for Bernie Sanders. The other thing that matters, as you say, it's a complex system with the Electoral College. So what matters is having celebrities in those areas that matter. So really, Ohio... Pennsylvania, Florida, those battleground states. Even so Texas it, now is a battleground state. Yeah, more so, and that's why people are going to be looking at Beyonce. Um, but, you know, uh, <laughs> you Le LeBron James and uh, Bruce Springsteen, you know, you can imagine their phone's going to be ringing quite a lot as well as we get closer to the vote. Well, anything I think that engages people and gets them at least interested in the process to then make up their own minds, it's got to be a good thing, yeah, right? Yeah, great. Alex, great to have you on. Some fantastic insight there. Cheers.